Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I want to show you how to create a closable slide in call to action to any corner of your page template in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so we're going to start off by coming all the way down here to Divi and then click on Theme Builder. So we're going to create a new template. So I'm gonna click on this plus button and over here I can choose specific pages. So if you want these pop-ups to be on a specific page, like perhaps maybe a landing page, you can come over here and then choose the actual page that you need. But in my case, I'm going to just have it here on a homepage. But of course, like I said, you can choose whatever pages you want over here. So I'm going to choose home page and create template. Next, I'm going to come over here to add custom body. I'm going to go in here and build custom body. Okay, so here we're going to build everything from scratch. So I'm going to click on start building. And we're also going to add our column structure. So I'm going to go with a single column. And then moving on, I'm going to add my content post here. So I'm going to search for post content. And this is going to act as our main container for the content on our page. So I'm going to click on, on that. And then the next step now is to go into the row settings and set up my widths. So I'm going to come over here, click this gear icon and go into design. So first of all, I'm going to click on uh, sizing and then I'm going to make sure this is set to 100% and maximum width is also set to 100%. Next, I'm going to come over here to my uh, spacing and I'm going to set my padding uh, to zero pixels, both to the top and the bottom. And then we're going to save. Next, I'm going to add uh, another section. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here and then click on this plus button. So this is going to be a regular section and I'm also going to have a one column structure. And uh, now before I go in and add my module, I'm going to go in and uh, set my section settings. Okay, so to do that, I'm just going to hover over this area here, click on this gear icon and uh, I'm going to add a gradient color. Okay, so click here on background and then I'm going to choose gradient. So over here, you can choose whatever colors that you need, but uh, I'm just going to add, you know, just uh, basic colors here just to create a, a uh, basic uh, gradient. So again, I'm going to choose black here, but this time I'm going to add some transparency like that. Okay, so with that set, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is to set my width to uh, 320 pixels. So I am going to, uh, in fact, you know what? I need to show the gradient above the image. So I'm gonna scroll down here and place the gradient above the image because we need to add an image before we do anything else. And uh, I also want to set this to 90 degrees. And then I'm gonna add my image by clicking on this plus button and I'm gonna add this image here as my background, okay? All right, so the next step now is to come over here to design and then click on sizing. So here I am going to set my width and uh, my width here is going to be 320 pixels and uh, my margin is going to be 320 to the left as well. So I'm gonna come over here to spacing and for my margin left, I am going to set this to 320. Next, I'm gonna add top and bottom padding. So I'm gonna set this to zero like that. And I also need to add my uh, animation style. So I'm going to come all the way down here to animation and I'm going to choose slide. So the slide needs to start from the left. So I'm going to come down here and set my slide from, in fact, one direction to be right. Okay. So it's coming from the left over to the right and the animation delay also needs to be adjusted. And I'm going to set this to 2000. There we go. Right, so the next step now is to head over to my CSS. So I'm going to click here on the advanced tab and uh, choose CSS ID and classes. And my class here is going to be called slide in CTA. Next, I'm also going to go in and add my Z index. So I'm going to come over here to position and I'm going to set my Z index to 999. And I also have some uh, CSS code that I need to add onto, onto this. So I'm gonna come back over here to my custom CSS and I'm gonna add it to the main element. Now, if you wanna use the exact same uh, settings as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. So right now you can see here that I've added my 
CSS code and this now has snapped over here fixed to the top. Right, so now that I have that in place, I'm going to save and then I'm gonna go into the row settings. So I'm gonna click here. And first thing I need to do is to head over here to the design tab, sizing, and activate use custom gutter width. Right, so with that activated now, I need to bring this all the way down to one and also set my width to 100%. And then I'm gonna go in and adjust my padding because we don't want any spaces above and below this. So I'm gonna come over here and set my padding to zero, both to the top and the bottom. So now that we've uh, added that, the next step now is to insert our module and the module is going to be a call to action. So I'm gonna save this and then over here now, as you can see, I don't have access to go in and add my module. So I'm gonna come over here to wireframe mode and then I'm gonna click here on uh, this plus button and add my call to action like that. And then I'm just gonna switch back over here to the front editor. All right, so now that I've added my call to action, I'm gonna go in now and add my title. So I'm just gonna say here, 25% off, but of course you can add uh, any text you know you like. Okay, so 25% uh, off Monday deal. And then I can also add my description here. And my description could be our biggest sale ever. Okay, now we also need to add our button text. So uh, for our button text here, I'm just gonna say click here. Now you notice that it's it's not showing. So what you need to do is to come over here and uh, add your link URL. But in my case, I'm just gonna add a blank one just so that my button shows. So now that we've added that, well, the next step now is to remove the background because remember we have a background behind it. So I'm gonna come over here and there's two ways to do this. We can either use uh, click here on transparent or you can disable use background color. So either of these work. So I've just disabled the background color. Now let's go in and uh, set our titles and uh, just work on our, our text here. So I'm gonna click here on design title text and uh, I'm gonna change this to Leto. But of course you can choose any font you want. And next I'm gonna set this to heavy and my title line height is going to be 1.3. So I'm just gonna do this a few times just to set my line height. Next, I'm gonna go to my body font and uh, here on my body font, I'm gonna set this to Leto as well. So I'm gonna come over here and select my font and I'm gonna make this bold as well. So now that we've, uh, we've, we have this set, uh, let's go ahead now and work on our button. So in order for us to customize our button, we need to click here where it says button and activate new custom styles for button. Okay, so now my texture is a bit too big. I'm gonna set this to 15 pixels. And then uh, I'm also going to do a few adjustments here. So the button border with that, I'm going to remove that and set this to zero. And for my button letter spacing, I'm gonna set this to one. And for my font, I'm gonna set this to Leto. There we go. And this time it's gonna be all caps. And I'm also going to set this to heavy. Now here on the button, uh, what we could do is we could style this by adding a background, but uh, instead of just adding a normal background, let's add a background with a gradient. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and add my first color. So I'm just gonna use my colors that I have here. And uh, for my second color here, I'm just gonna use a lighter version of this. I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit. And on my direction here, I'm gonna set this to 90, like that. Okay, so pretty much I'm happy with this, but uh, you know, my button looks really thin. So I am going to add some button padding. So I'm just gonna scroll down here and uh, start adding my padding. So top and bottom, I'm gonna set 12 pixels, both to the top and the bottom. So I'm just gonna activate my chain like that. And then for the left and the right, I'm gonna set this to 32 like that. Okay, so that was, that's looking great. Uh, I think there's one thing that I may also want to do here and uh, that is to add a bit of padding to, to this because right now you can see everything is close to the edges here. So to do that, I'm just gonna scroll out here and go to my spacing and my padding here is going to be 40 all around. So now you can see this is starting to take shape 
and I'm also going to add this 40 there. And now this is looking much, much better. Right, so pretty much I'm happy with that. I'm going to save here and we're going to add the open and close icon. So to do that, I'm gonna click here on add new module and the module here is going to be a blurb. So I'm just gonna type in a few letters here and select it. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna get rid of all this uh, text and because basically all we need here is an icon. So I'm gonna click here on image and icon and I'm gonna sit here to use icon, right? Next, I am going to look for my uh, plus button here, that, and now I need to customize this and uh, really make it look really, really cool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to the design and then I'm gonna go to image and icon and for my color here, I'm gonna set this to black Use icon font size, I'm gonna say yes, and then I'm gonna customize my icon size here, and I'm gonna set this to 40. All right, so now that I have this in place, I'm gonna to go to my sizing, because here I need to set my width. So my width here is going to be 40 pixels, and my height is also going to be 40. All right, so the next step is to head over here to border, and uh, for my rounded corners, I'm gonna set this to 50%. And then I need to go to transform rotate. So scroll all the way down here to transform and we need transform rotate. And I want to set this to 135. So I know you can't see it clearly here, but uh, that has uh, definitely switched. Now it's time to add our CSS class. So I'm going to come over here to the advanced tab, CSS ID and classes. And my class is going to be slide in target and then I'm also going to add some CSS code in the main element. So I'm gonna click here on custom CSS and I'm gonna add the CSS code. And by the way, if you wanna use the exact same CSS code that I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so moving on, I also need to add my CSS to the blurb image. So I'm gonna scroll down here and add my CSS code like that. So let's take a look at the final result so far. So I'm gonna click on save changes. I'm gonna save one more time. And then I'm just gonna close this and uh, let's do a quick preview. And I'm gonna open this in a new tab. All right, so let's do a quick preview. So you can see here on the top that it is now showing. Okay, so back over here. All right, so the next step now is to add all these to the other sides of our page. And to do that, all we need to do is to come over here and let's go into our settings. Now, in order for us to achieve this, we need to head over here to our wireframe mode. And uh, what you'll notice here is all I've done is I duplicated uh, my top left one. And this is an exact duplicate. So you can see here, these are the four of them. But to be honest, uh, having four may be a bit of uh, overkill. So you may just want to maybe just keep one on the top left or bottom right or whatever it is. But if you wanted to uh, add all these onto your page, you can just uh, duplicate them like this. And once duplicated, all you have to do is to change the uh, positioning. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna go back over here to my front view. In fact, let me show you. All right, so let's say you want to add the bottom right call to action. All you have to do is to click here on this gear icon, advanced custom CSS, and then you can see here, this is now fixed at the bottom and uh, right minus 320 pixels. So pretty much this is where you need to come and add your custom CSS to adjust the positioning. And finally, let's say you want to add one to the bottom left. If you come over here, this is where I made the changes custom CSS and you can see here this is where the custom CSS is. So pretty much this is what you need to do to position them in the three or four different corners. But to be honest, I don't think you should um, use all four of them. But this is just to show you that you have the capability of adding them to whichever sides that you want. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.